Hello, my name's Matt Parker and welcome to Maths in the Movies. This is the show where we look for mathematical mistakes in films and then get very upset about them. Our first film today is Fast and Furious, yet another reworking of the sentence, the fast and the furious, and it signifies the fourth film in this particular franchise. The plot, somewhat unsurprisingly, involves lots of cars being driven in a fast and predominantly furious manner. And frankly, what's not to like about that? However, in one scene, Vin Diesel's character is driving a 1973 Camaro, and he proceeds to do a wheelie on a dirt surface. Don't get me wrong, this is indeed bare cool, but it does raise some very interesting mathematical questions. Now to take a closer look at these mass questions, we require a 1973 Camaro. Unfortunately, we haven't got one. So we're going to have to use a rough approximation, namely this. A 1996 Mazda MX-5. Not a Camaro, but we have cunningly sellotaped the word Camaro to the rear of it. Right. We're going to assume, in order to pop a wheelie, the Chimera has to rotate around this, its rear axle. If we take the total mass into account, it's approximately 1,750 kilograms. Of that, 1,391 kilograms is in front of the axle, and the remaining 359 kilograms is behind. That rear 359 kilograms acts at an average distance of 0.51 meters, giving us a clockwise moment of 1.8 kilonewton meters. However, the 1,391 kilograms in front, acting at a distance of 1.88 meters, gives us a 25.7 kilonewton meter moment in the anti-clockwise direction. Clearly, we're going to need another very large moment to balance these out and even give us a net clockwise moment to pop our wheelie. That force has to be applied down here. Here, where the tyre contacts the road. Now, while the Camaro's engine technically can provide enough force to do a wheelie, it needs to not exceed the static friction. If it does, the wheel's just going to spin and not lift the car. On a bitumen surface, the coefficient of friction is around about 0.8 to 1. And in an ideal situation, it is technically possible for the Chimera to do a wheelie. But on this, a gravel surface, where the coefficient of friction is substantially smaller, is just absolutely impossible. So how did they do it? The secret is here in the boot. The filmmakers took a thousand kilograms of concrete and lead, crammed it into the boot, sealed it up, reinforced the car to stop it from bending in half and once that was all done this huge extra clockwise moment was so great that the slightest bit of acceleration caused the car to wheelie. So there you have it. It is mathematically possible to wheelie a Camara. Touche Fast and the Furious. Touche. <laughs> Our second film today is 21. Now, not only is 21 a film that's been named after an actual number, it's also a film about mathematicians. Brilliant! The plot is a highly dramatized story of real mathematicians going about their normal lives, namely, befriending Kevin Spacey and then making millions in Vegas. 300. You bet so? Oh. Now they did this by playing blackjack and using a technique known as card counting. In blackjack, you're initially dealt two cards. You then add together the value of these cards. Anything like a five or a number is just the value on there. An ace is one or eleven. And then kings, queens and jacks are all ten. So I would have fifteen here. You can then choose to take as many extra cards as you want to try and increase your score, but if you take too many and go over 21 in total, you bust and you lose your money. Now players can choose as many extra cards as they want, but the croupier, on behalf of the casino, has to follow very strict rules. This has the interesting effect that low cards are very useful for the casino, and high cards are very useful 
for the player. To keep track of the changing probabilities and how much of an advantage they have, good blackjack players will do something called card counting, which is where you keep a count of what sorts of cards have already been used. In the film 21, they use a method called high-low. Whenever low cards go through, so two, three, four, five, and six, they adjust their count by increasing it by one point. Seven, eight, and nine are all in different cards. The count doesn't change. And for any cards, 10, jack, queen, king, and ace, the count goes down by one. So if the count is high, the probabilities favor the player, and so they bet more money. If the count is low or even negative, the probabilities favor the casino, and so the players only bet the bare minimum. By following the count and keeping track of the probabilities, the players gain an advantage, and they can even win money off the casino. Now the film 21 is very mathematically accurate, apart from one scene. They've established that the count is 17, some more cards are dealt, the count should be 18, and then out comes the Queen of Diamonds. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. However, afterwards, once the queens come through, the players say the count is still 18, when it should in fact have gone down now to 17. And frankly, if you mistake the Queen of Diamonds for an indifferent card, you're going to lose the game. That's the kind of sloppy maths that we just can't afford.